Hello everyone, my name is Martin Paries, first year PhD student working on the analysis of mixed data. And today we will talk about a multivariate analysis of just about right scale data with optimal scaling, a work I'm doing with uh, Evin Vigneault and Stéphanie Boujard. First, I will um, introduce my work by adding a context to it and present my contribution. Um, I don't know if everyone here is familiar with uh, just about right scale, but as a reminder, they are a bipolar labeled attribute used to identify whether product attributes are perceived too high or too low and uh, are very popular in consumer research and uh, sensor analysis. Here is an example of a jar scale. Uh, they have an anchored midpoint uh, jar, which corresponds to the theoretical ideal uh, level of a respondent and endpoints that represent intensity level of the attributes that are too high or too low. And then uh, re the results are computed in a data table that we will denote X for the rest of this presentation. We will now be interested in um, how to analyze attribute measure on a jar scale. In uh, the literature, there are uh, numerous methods depending on what the researcher needs. Uh, a first category of methods uh, are interested in the relationship of jar variable with other quantitative data, such as the overall liking, for example, the famous penalty analysis. But this is not what we are interested in today. Today, we are interested in a method that performs multidimensional description of the different attributes measured on jar scale. These methods are performed on X. Their goal are to find a principal component which best represents the information contained in X and uh, they are then uh, used to represent the attributes in a multidimensional space. These are called multivariate component-based methods. We found in the literature two uh, main ways to, to perform component-based multivariate analysis of JAR variables. The first one is to perform a principal component analysis of X, where jar variables are implicitly considered as numeric, with uh, three being the jar level. Uh, here, the distance between the categories is assumed equal, which in practice is not true. Respondents tend to use the N categories uh, less often than other categories. Another way is to perform multiple correspondence analysis of X, in this case, jar variables are implicitly considered as nominal, but the information about the order of the modalities in the jar scale is lost. So we made the conclusion that the assumption made about the nature of jar variable in the literature are not consensual and not obvious. In this context, I'm, I'm proposing a descriptive multivariate analysis of sensory attributes measured on jar, jar scale with respect to the assumed nature of the variables uh, that we will call the level of scaling uh, and three levels are, pro are proposed, numeric, nominal, or ordinal. To do so, I will first present optimal scaling, which makes it possible to take into account a variable with various nature, the level of scaling, how it works and how we, how we implemented it. And then we will apply the developed algorithm with, the real, uh, jar, with real jar scale data uh, when we will consider jar variables in a component-based multivariate analysis, either as numeric, nominal, or ordinal, and then compare the results. The question I tried to answer in this presentation is, is there really a level of scaling that suits better jar variables? I will now uh, describe optimal scaling. Bock defined optimal scaling as all the approach which assign numerical values to categories. And in 1981, Young introduced a general class of algorithm called alternating least square algorithm with optimal scaling, where um, each variable has a level of scaling and each variable is quantified in terms of uh, this level of scaling that adapts to the nature of the variable. Notable methods are HOMALS which is an homogeneity analysis method, and Prinkles, which is a nonlinear principal component analysis. In this slide, I will explain how ALSOS algorithm works. Uh, every ALSOS algorithm begins with the initialization of T, the component, followed by a first step of optimal scaling, where variables are quantified conditional to fix T. Each variable uh, X, Xg uh, will be quantified to X tilde G, 
uh, thanks to quantification function, which are regression of each variable on T, and then concatenated in the matrix X tilde, uh, which contain the optimally quantified variable. Then X tilde is sent to the second step, the model estimation, where T is calculated conditional to fix X tilde, and T is sent back to the first step. These two steps alternate until the convergence of the least square minimization criterion of homogeneity analysis. The ALSOS algorithm we implemented uh, with uh, R, its aim is to seek for three metrics, X still containing the optimally quantified variable, T the principal component, and A the loadings. And we also added a restriction of rank one to quantification functions in order to obtain simple quantification of each, each variable. It is now time to apply the uh, algorithm to a real uh, jar scale data. The data we used are from the thesis of Alexia and Luc that she just presented to you. In this experiment, 62 consumers were asked to rate eight products, which, were, which are French cheese, on uh, 10 attributes. The objective of this application is to first perform a component-based multivariate analysis on these 10 attributes as either numeric, nominal, or ordinal and then compare the result based on first the transformation of the variable, the explained inertia, and the interpretability of the multidimensional factorial representation. In this slide, I explain the level of scaling of the jar scale. If it is considered as numeric, uh, it is recorded with real numbers that can be added or subtracted, uh, three being the jar level. If it is considered as nominal, each label corresponds to a category. And if it is considered as ordinal, each label corresponds to a category, and these categories can be ordered from smaller to larger. In this slide, we will be interested in uh, the transformation of the jar variable uh, through optimal scaling. To visualize the transformation, we plotted on the x-axis the original data, and on the y-axis uh, the quantification. Uh, first for uh, one var jar variable, which is fruity taste. For the numeric scaling uh, present here, we observe a proportionality in the quantification, the transformation being linear. For the nominal scaling, we, observe, uh, we can really observe the bipolarity of the jar scale. So this uh, scaling uh, highlights best the bipolarity of the jar scale. For ordinal scaling, uh, we observe that the quantification are ordered from smaller to larger due to the order restriction, but we also observe a naturalization of one half of the scale due to this order restriction. So what are the consequences of these different quantification on the result? First, on the quality of representation, if we look at the percentage of explained inertia of the first component here in red, we observe that the nominal level of scaling seems to resituate uh, more inertia followed by the ordinal level and the numeric level. This is also confirmed if we look at the cumulative percentage uh, of the three first component. Uh, we'll now be interested in the multidimensional representation of jar variable through the loading plot, the loading plot which are the correlation of the quantified variable with principal component. First, for the numeric scaling, we observe that the sign of the cor correlation is meaningful, with descriptor firm uh, and creamy being opposite on the representation. For the nominal scaling, uh, on the other hand, we observe that the sign of correlation isn't meaningful anymore because uh, the sign of a correlation of a nominal vari variable doesn't have sense, creamy, creamy texture and firm texture being on the same size uh, on the representation. And for the ordinal scaling, the sign of correlation is again meaningful, with descriptor firm and creamy being opposite. We will now be interested in the representation of the modalities only for the nominal and the ordinal variable because the notion of modalities uh, doesn't exist in the numeric scaling. Uh, first, for one jar variable, the variable fruity taste, the modalities coordinate are obtained by multiplying the quantification of the modalities times the loading of the associated variable. I also added a color code, uh, the jar modality being colored in uh, green, 
then two intensity of red for the too much modalities and two intensity of blue for the not enough modalities. For the nominal scaling present here, we observe that modalities coordinate are first on a straight line. This is due to the rank, to the rank one restriction we added. And they are also unordered because there is no order restriction in the nominal scaling. For the ordinal scaling, we also observe that the modalities are on a straight line, but they are also ordered from smaller to larger. But as mentioned earlier, we also observe there is a neutralization of one half of the scale with three modalities uh, being on the same point, which are too much intense and much too much intense. Now we'll be interested in the multidimensional representation of all modalities of all attributes. The representation here is very interesting and I will explain how to read it uh, now. Uh, first, there is a color code uh, that is the same as before with jar being colored in green. And then each shape corresponds to one attribute. This representation allows the researcher to look for accumulation of defect meaning in uh, modalities color in intense blue or in intense red, and to link it with the factorial description of the product over here. Uh, we observe that the representation separates uh, first the products that are jar from other products. And also here we can uh, see an accumulation of defects, uh, which are, for example, intensity taste or uh, fruity taste, meaning that product over here uh, must have a defect linked with their taste. I will now try to uh, synthesize and to interpret uh, the result. So the question uh, I asked uh, first myself uh, was, is there really a level of scaling that suits better jar variable? And uh, by looking of, at the explainer inertia and the transformation, uh, we would say that the nominal level of scaling best fits jar variables. Uh, and now we would also like to add a comment that with the rank one restriction, modalities quantification of one attribute uh, are on the same direction, which is uh, different from a classical multiple correspondence analysis. The ordinal level is very interesting because it preserves the order information, but uh, we observe a neutralization of one half of the scale. Uh, we can make a link with the demi coding approach of a jar scale, which also uh, transform uh, the bipolarity, the, which transforms the jar scale from a bipolar one to a unipolar one. And finally, the, for the numeric level, the linear transformation does not seem realistic for jar variables. Uh, further comparison with the demi coding approach for the ordinal uh, could be very interesting. And also, uh, in optimal scaling, there is a possibility to consider a numeric polynomial level. Uh, we, al we already looked at some uh, pre preliminary results and they look alike a lot uh, than uh, the one from the nominal scaling. So this could be very, very interesting to continue to look at. Uh, here are the references I used for this presentation. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to me. Okay, thanks. Thank I you, Martin. Stop, I will stop the sharing of my screen. Yeah, maybe and, you can. Uh, yes, you can. Not. Yeah, I've got a question. Maybe on yeah, uh, the, the slide uh, eighteen. Yes, of start. course. Uh, I will don't share. To prepare your question, everyone. I will share my screen mm. back. So eighteen. Um, yes, eighteen. In the result, I'm a little bit surprised on uh, the fact that the too much and the too less uh, modalities mm -hmm. are very close to each other. How do how can we explain that? Um, here and here. Yes. Um, uh, for example, for yes, the uh, in the right uh, down part of the graph, um, they 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 correspond to defects of the products. So yes, they, they, this defect for very different reason. It's defect because too less. And... Yes. Um. May, maybe there is a confusion uh, from the, the the consumer uh, about the intensity. Um, or, um, yeah, that's a good, good question. And because it's a very, um, surprising result in jar, uh, domain, we can say, uh, because sometimes one product have got, uh, one defect 
but it's uh, it's very rare to, rare to have uh, two defects and two different meanings, too much and too less. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't really have an answer right I, now. I don't know this product, so maybe it's a specific product. I'm, I'm going to write it down and and. Uh, and Mental and Conte uh, maybe have an, are very. Uh, split the population the samples into uh, population yep okay and just another question um, mm -hmm. do you develop the, uh, the the function also algorithm or uh, do you use the no of course i, I use the, the existing one um we were there is a lot of uh, alsos algorithm existing in the literature um, but we uh, we used a lot of bi bi bibliography to uh, program our own. Okay, so you developed uh, your own. Uh... Yeah, but but uh, by using a lot of bibliography mm. uh, available uh, for everyone. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Any other question? We've got two minutes left uh, for that. So help yourself. No. On the chat that the people put it into nearby, so I think it was Elias. Okay, sorry. To come and ask your question, or or to put it on the not nearby but to everybody so that everybody can see your your point. Maybe I was wrong. Huh? Okay. Did you see the question, uh, Martin, in the chat? Uh, um, no, nope. I'm, okay, I'm I... on... So first thing for the presentation, I can see in your quiz that you have the interval scaling. Why didn't you try this level of scaling on your data? Because uh, this level of scaling doesn't exist. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, maybe I just gave a uh, part of the answer of my quiz, but... Uh... I, I'm trying to answer the question, which was why didn't I use the interval scaling? Yep. Um, but it, it it doesn't exist in the in the literature, so. You know, this is not the right answer. Yes. I'm giving I'm giving a hint of my uh, of my answer, but um, for the for the right answer, but. Okay. <laughs> 